Welcome to 101. I'm Greg Bassey, your host from the Salisbury Independent Newspaper. It's a big day here at PAC 14. We have one of my favorite people in town, Cheryl Mitten Meadows is here. Welcome. Thank you. Thanks, Greg. Glad hey, to be here. You represent a group that does something really cool in this town. <laughs> it's just one of the best groups ever, Salisbury Neighborhood Housing. Tell me what you do there. I'm the executive director. Um, I've been with the company for 25 years now. And, and our, that's as old as the company is. It is. I started just a couple of months after um, the organization got up and running. Uh, we, our mission is to cultivate sustainable neighborhoods, and we do that through homeownership opportunities and homeownership preservation programs. So you've got a great program, a great website. So if I'm somebody who's kind of borderline and I want to um, invest in a neighborhood, I want to kind of preserve the neighborhood and, and keep myself in Salisbury, I can come to you all and you have sort of a uh, inventory that can help me and uh, all kinds of plans that will help me become a homeowner. We do. We have a lending side where we offer uh, second mortgages for down payment and closing cost assistance. We offer rehab loans for existing homeowners. Um, we also have grants available for lower income families that may need assistance with down payment and closing costs. Um, on the educational side, we provide credit and budget counseling. Uh, financial fitness classes, which is basic money management, and we also are a foreclosure counseling agency in case you're in trouble and uh, right. might be facing the possibility of losing your home. One of the feedbacks I get from people all the time is they, they take that financial training and they realize they don't know anything. Right. I, I'm sure, does that, does that happen a lot? You get people in there and they just don't have a clue about how the whole process works? It does. Um, it's, it's a big investment buying a home and one of the biggest changes I've noticed in the 25 years I've been doing this is the technology and everybody wants to do everything online. Right. Um, and I think you miss something um, when you're not engaging with you know, your, your loan officer or your home inspector and that's why we really encourage people to take the class, um, interact with other people that are going through the same process that you are and I think people get more out of it that way. Yeah, I thought I was pretty sharp. Um, you know, my father was a realtor for years, and I, I thought I knew this stuff. But when I bought my first house, just the amount of papers I had to sign, you know, at first I was going to read them all. <laughs> You'd be you know, there after an hour, yeah. and I'm just like just signing, you know, at random. And but it was all good because I trusted the people that were there certainly. And there's a process to this that all of us go through. That's true. What's your typical customer like? Your typical person who comes in and they, they want to talk to you? What, do you have somebody, it, any commonality there? It's, uh, it varies day to day. Um, our organization is unique in that we don't have income restrictions for most of our programs because we want economically diverse neighborhoods. Now, we'll serve um, very low income people or higher income. We just want people to live in the city uh, neighborhoods and to make an investment in their community. Um, so, you know, we may have somebody come in that's owned three houses before, um, and they don't need as much hand-holding, but we also have people that have never gone through the experience before and have no idea where to start. Right, and that's kind of perception that it might be for people who are maybe at risk, but it's not, it's for everybody. It's for everyone. Right, and the idea is to preserve this neighborhood, now, or these neighborhoods, and you've done, People give you so much credit for what you've done with the North Camden area. That seems to be a priority area. That is one of our target neighborhoods. We have four, um, Camden, the Doverdale Church Street area, Newtown, and the West Side. Um, so when I say it's our target area, there are certain programs that we only do in those neighborhoods. Right. But then we also have loan products that we offer not only in the city, but also uh, throughout the county. Any success stories you like to cite for people when they say, how's it, oh, how's wow. it going? One of my favorite projects was the Rose Street redevelopment that we did. Mm -hmm. um, there was a landlord in town that owned 11 contiguous properties on Rose Street. He ended up um, passing away and those properties became available and we were able to buy basically the whole block. 
and we demolished all 11 properties, resubdivided the lots so they'd be a little bit bigger. And then in a partnership with the CTE program at Parkside High School, the students there have been building houses for us. Um, and if you've been by, I have um, been. Road I Street, need to get over it, there. It is beautiful. It's right across from Chipman Elementary School. Okay. And so we now have 11, because we also bought some properties around the corner, we now have 11 new uh, single family, three bedroom, two bath ranchers that are all owner occupied. Wow, story for the newspaper, that's good. Yeah. Now my kids went to Salisbury Middle, so I used to ride by there all the time, but I don't, I don't get over there like I yeah. used to. You have to check it out. Yeah, and that's a great neighborhood. I remember when I was a kid, that was a, a, a very nice neighborhood, a very tight neighborhood, and it, it kind of went into decline, but it's ready to come back, you yeah. can tell that. It's a great program because the kids, um, they're building a house for a family, and they, they're not only learning a trade, they're actually helping someone become a homeowner. Well, that's cool. So about how many people do you deal with every year? Do you help? Uh, well, we um, see about 300 to 350 people a year. Wow. And we create about 60 new homeowners. Um, wow. the, the rest of those numbers are people that do the credit and budget counseling, uh, take our home buyer education class, or come in for foreclosure assistance. Right. Do you get to see that happy expression, the re result of the, all the good work? I mean, are you at yes, the table? Do you get to be part of that? That's the best part, is going to settlement and yeah. watching somebody, you know, hold the keys to their house for the first time. And you keep track of them afterward, or how we does do, that go? We do, we um, do, because we want them to know that we're there for them, not only at the beginning of the process, but also at the end. Um, just in case they get in trouble, they can always come back to us and, you know, we can try to work with them to get their finances back in order and keep them on track. Um, we also have a post-purchase class that we do that maybe we'll have somebody from Home Depot or you know, Lowe's come in and teach you how to do weather stripping or repair the guts in the toilet or something like that. You right. Know. So Habitat for Humanity does a great job in our community. Um, how do you guys work with Habitat? How are you different than Habitat? We do work with Habitat. We um, provide the home buyer education counseling for Habitat's clients. Uh, we have traded lots with Habitat, um, and particularly in the Doverdale Church Street neighborhood. Um, we are both targeting that neighborhood for redevelopment and increased home ownership. Um, Habitat has also helped us rehab some of the houses that we've um, purchased and renovated in that neighborhood. Oh, excellent. Yeah, and I've seen you and Molly uh, at, at City Council before, and it's like great to have two advocates for, for neighborhood housing. It is. We both have basically the same mission. We just might go about it in different ways. Right. Now you mentioned a survey that you might have c coming up for the North Camden neighborhood? We were doing a community impact survey. We started it in 2014. Um, we went door to door um, interviewing residents about their experience in the neighborhood, um, how they feel about their neighborhood, do they participate in city council meetings or other civic organizations, and we also do a um, a visual assessment uh, block by block of the housing stock in the neighborhood. So we first started that in 2014, we repeated it in 2017, and we're gearing up for year three, um, which is gonna start in July. So wow. if there's anyone out there that wants to volunteer right. and help, help us go door to door, we'd be glad to um, have you help us. That would be a great service that would really help. It is, yeah. and once we get the report, we, we make the report public, um, and we can compare people's responses, you know, over the years. Now, you all are a nonprofit. We are a nonprofit, and, and I'm sure people just send you money randomly, and you've got plenty of money. You don't need <laughs> that any would help be great. at all. <laughs> Um, we are chartered by NeighborWorks America, which is a congressionally chartered nonprofit, and we are one of about 250 NeighborWorks organizations across the country. So people donate money and then use that money to, to buy homes? So sometimes we buy homes. Okay. Um, we have special funding that we use to do that. Um, our main line of business, of course, is lending to people to buy homes. Okay. Um, but we have a, uh, an acquisition rehab uh, fund that we use to purchase properties only in those four neighborhoods I mentioned earlier. Right. Um, one successful project we just did was on Ohio Avenue in the Camden neighborhood, and we were able to purchase 
two properties side by side if you haven't been down ohio avenue you have to go see these houses are absolutely beautiful wow they were both both sold in two thousand and eighteen to new homeowners well i was a kid i had a newspaper route on ohio and florida and newton street so i got to know all those houses but i'm not over there like i need to be yeah and and newton street you know the city is opening the new community center which we're very excited about right we think that'll be a great asset to the neighborhood. That's going to make that whole neighborhood better. Yeah, the city has been um, a really great partner to Salisbury Neighborhood Housing, um, both financially and with uh, programming. Right. It, it seems to be better. I, see, I guess there's more understanding of what needs to be done in the neighborhoods by yeah, the city now. Yeah, and there's there's an excitement now about this, the city and downtown and, and building up the neighborhoods. And right. It's, Growing up here, you've been here from the beginning. I um, have. Where, how do you think we're doing? Where do you think Salisbury's headed? Are you proud of where we're headed, or is there much more we could do? Uh, What's your brain on this? I'm very proud to be from um, Salisbury. I went to elementary, high school, and college here. Um, and again, I am excited about the direction that, that the mayor and the vision that he has for the city. Um, I thought the National Folk Festival was a great example, and I just think all the excitement and the energy is going to just entice more people to move to Salisbury and become a homeowner. My father's a realtor. I was preached to always buy your home, but there's so many people out there now who say, don't buy a house, just rent. Well, you know, homeownership's not for everyone. Um, but if you want to rent, you're going to need good credit. You're going to need some savings. So we can still assist you if you want to come in and sit down with one of our counselors. And, and I think Salisbury Neighborhood Housing was formed at a time when there was an alarm bell going off about the number of rentals in the city. Uh, it, that's, it, it crossed that's over true. from the 50% uh, line. I remember Robin Cocky was very upset mm-hmm. about it, um, that we were losing that home ownership. The percentage now, I think it's what, 62 percent or something like that? Uh, last time I checked, it was like 70, 30. Is it that it's high? Still, okay. But I think all the multifamily units may skew that right. number a bit as well. But you're right. We were created to address housing issues in the city, um, aging housing stock, um, the number of rentals that were in the neighborhood. And it was Mayor Martin that actually appointed a task force um, back in the early 90s to study this issue and that's how Salisbury Neighborhood Housing became about. When you got there 25 years ago did you think you'd still be there 25 years? Oh honestly I didn't you know I was um, I was working as a planner for Wicomico County and I had been working with the task force um, as kind of the staff liaison and um, when the organization got up and running I thought I think I want to work there. Wow. Yeah so um, it was a little scary going to a new startup nonprofit, but also exciting because, you know, you're creating something new. You've done something really important. Yeah. Thank you. And that's, <laughs> and that's really key. Yeah. Now, are you going to celebrate your anniversary or just let it go? We are celebrating our 25th <laughs> anniversary with uh, a ribbon cutting and open house. We just moved to our brand new office right, space. Right, you have a new office space? We do. It's very nice. Uh, we're at 560 Riverside Drive. Right across from the church. Right across from the church. Um, so again, next Wednesday, we'll be having a ribbon cutting open house. Everyone's invited. Anybody uh, can go, even me? Even you. Okay. Even I, you. Can I just, bring my camera? Just, you can, please <laughs> okay. do. Just uh, RSVP <laughs> okay. so we can make sure we have plenty, plenty of, of food. food and drink. Yes. <laughs> So when's your open house? Our open house is Wednesday, March 27th. Um, ribbon cutting starting at 4.30, uh, a little program, and then food and drink to celebrate our new office space and our 25th anniversary. Tell me about your board of directors and um, h- how they're set up and how they work with the banks. How does that work? We have a 21-member board of directors. Uh, we also have an executive committee of about eight uh, members. We have representation from the local lending institutions. Uh, We have city representation. And by our charter, we're required to have 51% of our board be made up of neighborhood residents. Great. That's good. So um, the banks are supportive of what goes on? They they understand the need or? The local lenders have been very supportive of our organization, um, both financially and with providing um, first mortgages for our clients. I've had people say to me there's too many corporate banks coming into Salisbury and the, the, they don't understand things the way the local banks are. I don't know if that's true. I'm just trying to find out. I mean, is, you have a better relationship with the local banks or everybody's good? Um, everybody we work with is good. Uh, when I first started, you know, 25 years ago, there were lots of local lenders, but right. they have kind of been... 
bought up by the new, yes, by, by some of the larger organizations. If I'm a, 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 a renter and I'm, I, I want to buy a house, what, what do I need to do to prepare myself for this ordeal? First thing to do is look at your credit and see you know, where your credit score is. Um, typically, we want to see a credit score of about 650. And you know, some people think, oh, I'm never going to be able to get my credit score up there. Well, your credit didn't get bad overnight. It is going to take some time, but um, they can come in and work with our counselors. And if they can get on an, an action plan and just take you know, one, one piece of it at a time, um, they'll, they'll get where they need to be. So even like a year out from me going to buy a house, I can come to you and, and get some counseling and try to fix that credit report? Absolutely. And you can work with our counselors as little or as often as you need to. If, if once a week is what works for you to keep you on track, that's great. If you want to check in every three months, that's fine too. Now, when I bought a house, the last house I bought was in 1999. And I, I it was before the financial crisis, obviously, and this probably contributed to the financial crisis, but I didn't have to really come up with a down payment. I was able to borrow that somewhere else. Mm -hmm. um, but now I understand banks are more tight about the down payments, and people say, I'll never get 20% to put down. Yeah. How does all that work? Well, the good thing is you don't need 20%. Okay. <laughs> um, with Salisbury Neighborhood Housing, you can get in for a minimum of $1,000. Wow. Um, we want to see everybody have some skin in the game. Right. You know, you're more invested if you have some of your own money involved. Um, but there are lots of programs where the down payment can be as little as 2%. Um, but again, we like to see each home buyer have at least $1,000 in the deal. And that doesn't mean they have to have $1,000 sitting in their pocket. It can go toward their home inspection, the appraisal, any of those upfront costs that they pay right. can go toward their $1,000. Right. So that, that's pretty good. I, I didn't know that. I thought I would have to have more money to walk in. No. So these days, everyone needs a great website, and you've got a pretty good website. We have a brand new website. Right. We have a brand new website. Our marketing officer, Amanda Smith, revamped that, and it looks great. It, stuff is easier to find. Right. And it's divided up by our different programs, the lending side or the educational side or the acquisition rehab, where you could see if we have any houses for sale. Yeah, and it, what is the address? Of the website? Yes. Uh, www.salisburynhs.org. Right. You mentioned the credit score for being eligible. What, are there mm -hmm. other criteria that I would need to meet? Um, you have to live in the home. It has to be owner-occupied, so you can't use our financing and turn it into a, a rental property. Right. Um, as long as you have the loan with us, you have to live in it. If you decide to sell it, um, like any other loan, you would just pay us off. Um, we do the grant programs that we have for down payment and assist, assistance do have a five year lien on the grants. So as long as you live there for five years, then that grant is completely forgiven at the end of the fifth year. You never have to pay that back. If you do sell within the first five years, you would have to pay a prorated portion. Excellent. So it just seems like just 10 years ago, there was just this hysteria about rental houses in the neighborhoods. And you know we had legislation, four to three, three to two. Um, and all that hysteria has seemed to have, have vanished. And I want to say that your group has had a lot to do with that. Well, and, and also the university. I mean, they've built a lot of student housing that right. has helped to alleviate you know, some of that problem. The whole, they got the kids off Florida Avenue thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, you know, as, as we've purchased houses in the Camden neighborhood specifically, because that's where the university is, we've been able to um, turn those back into single family homes. Right. And that, that, I think that North Camden neighborhood, even more than Newtown, I think it's like critical to the success of Salisbury. I've always, maybe because I grew up in that neighborhood, but I just, I just see it as the, sort of the, the touchstone about what's going on in, in town. If we can get that fixed, it just seems like it's going to be better for every other neighborhood. There have been studies, you know, that show that increased home ownership um, brings more stability to the neighborhood. Um, we certainly believe that, and, and you know, that's why our, our mission is to, to help increase the home ownership rate within the city of Salisbury. How competitive are your rates in your service compared to me doing it on my own? <laughs> well, rates are still very low, um, you know, c compared to what they were when I started 25 years right. ago. Um, so the way our program works, if you're getting a second mortgage from us, the rate on our second will match the rate on the first mortgage, unless you're in one of those four target neighborhoods. Then your interest rate is a point below. Wow. 
So the rates are very competitive, and with the lower, you know, down payment, it's it's pretty affordable to some for somebody to become a homeowner. In many instances, they're going to be paying less on their mortgage than they were previously paying on the rent. Well, wow. so I would assume your scope is limited to Salisbury and Wicomico County, or how does that work? Uh, for a long time it was, um, but we have recently expanded. Our educational programs are available in Somerset, Worcester, and Wicomico, and we were getting ready to launch a second mortgage program for Somerset and Worcester counties. So we'll be able to assist residents um, in Somerset and Worcester with down payment and closing cost loans as well. Excellent. All right, wrap me up. Tell me about your event again, your open house. Our open house is Wednesday, March 27th at 4.30, um, celebrating our 25th anniversary and our new office space. Um, don't forget we have our community impact survey starting in July, and then our annual fundraiser will be in October, golf tournament at Green Hill. Yeah, that's a good one. You guys always send me pictures. Yeah. And it looks like <laughs> that's everyone, a fun event. Everyone's having it's, fun yeah, there. It was a real fun event. That's good. And your offices are across the street from the Catholic Church on Riverside Drive. 560 Riverside Drive. We're in Suite A, 102. She's Cheryl Minton Meadows. She's doing a tremendous job for Salisbury. We can't applaud her or Salisbury Neighborhood Housing enough. Thanks for being here today. Thank you, Greg. Appreciate it. I'm Greg Bassett from the Salisbury Independent Newspaper. Another edition of 101 here on PAC 14. First Shore Federal is proud to support PAC-14 and one-on-one. -on -one. We'd encourage every business to support PAC-14 and, and pick a program and support it and let's make a difference.